So, autoimmune disease. It's probably the most common diagnosis today. And it is because of the toxic world we live in, at least part of it. So let's discuss what an autoimmune disorder is. So first we have to understand some basic physiology of your immune system. So your immune system is, uh, is formulated, anybody know where your immune system is in your body? Small intestine. What? I, the bones. Really your immune system is everywhere. Okay? Your immune cells are circulating through your blood and your immune cells do one thing mainly and one thing well. They kill things. So you have T cells that are circulating around your body and all these are different stages of development and they're macrophages, they're white blood cells, they're specifically to go around looking for something to kill. So we, we uh, as we talk about to make it simple, you have really two pieces of your immune response. You have your, what's called your immediate response or what we could call your Th1 response and you have your Th2 response. And your Th1 response, if you can think of it like a cartoon, they are the Marine Corps going around with uh, machine guns looking for something to kill. That's what's going to keep you from getting sick is a healthy Th1 response. So your Th1 response is your immediate response. So if I come in this room and you breathe a virus on me, that virus goes into my body through my lungs and enters into my bloodstream. And if it's at a great enough concentration, I am going to fire, my immune system is going to fire a Th1 response. So my Th1 cells stimulate uh, more production, it releases more Th1 cells. They go down and they find that virus and they kill that virus and, and then that Th1 response drops back down and so I have this little blip of a Th1 response if we want to think of it that way and then it kills the virus and it goes back into balance and I never knew I was sick. Now this happens to us on a daily basis, many times a day, quite often. So we're exposed to some pathogen and then our body kills that pathogen and I never got sick. Well, I didn't get sick. Everybody else was sick in the room, but I never got sick. You had a healthy Th1 response and it was strong enough to kill that virus and your body went back into balance. So normally, a person, this immune system, this immune response needs to be balanced all the time. But it's never balanced all the time. It is always just coming back to equilibrium. So I have an exposure to a pathogen, it fires a Th1 response, it kills it, it brings back into balance. Now let's say I'm exposed to a really bad pathogen like some influenza or something like that. So I fire a Th1 response, it's not able to kill it. Eight hours later it's continuing to fire a Th1 response, continuing to fire a Th1 response. That's when I'm not feeling really good. I think I got a fever, I don't really feel so hot. Am I sweaty? Do I look okay? And I go home and I take a nap, I go to bed and that Th1 response then is unable to kill it within 24 hours. Then what your body does is it shuts down the Th1 response and it fires this Th2 response. Now the Th2 side of your immune system is responsible mainly for creating antibodies. Now whatever it is that the Th1 response fired against, whatever pathogen that was, and it's supposed to only fire against some living organism like a virus, bacteria, uh, parasite, fungus, mold, Lyme disease, something like that, it fired a response against it and it wasn't, if it wasn't able to kill it, that's when the Th1 response will be suppressed and the Th2 response fires. Well, stay with me because it's really important when you're dealing with, with, with uh, taking care of people that have these issues. Now the Th2 response fires, think of them pictorially as the, the CIA or the FBI. All, they're not going to really kill anything but they're going to go in there and they're going to find whatever pathogen the Th1 response fired against and they're going to tag it. So they're actually creating antibodies that fit right around that but think of it as they're going to mark it with a tag. There's the virus, we're going to mark it with some fluorescent tape and that's what the Th2 response does. 
And then within about 8 to 24 hours, that suppresses, and I fire another Th1 response. And now, the Marine Corps, with the machine guns, can now find the enemy, and it kills it. So now I was sick for a couple of days, but now I'm feeling a lot better. I don't know what I had. I was in bed, I, you know, I drank a bunch of chicken soup and took some vitamin C and I feel great. Well, you fired a TH1 and a TH2 response and then a TH1 response and you won the battle and now you're better. That's really what happened from an immunological perspective. Okay? Well, well great, now I know that. I'm right, a better person. Well, it's really important to know that when you're dealing with chronic disorders. So when a person has a chronic disorder that is now labeled an autoimmune disorder, what is that? So we look up the definition of an autoimmune disease and we see autoimmune disease. It's when my body is attacking my own tissue. Oh, well, that's not good. So I'm going to ask my doctor, you diagnosed me with rheumatoid arthritis. That's an autoimmune disorder. Why is it happening, doctor? Well, that's an autoimmune disorder and uh, it's idiopathic which is Latin for, we have no idea. <laughs> so uh, th that's typically the, the, the best, the deepest answer that you get, but that's not good enough. Okay, why? So what is an autoimmune disease? Well, I looked it up. It says when your body is attacking your own tissue. Well, let's expand that definition a little bit. It's not your body that's attacking your own tissue. It's your immune system. So either a hyper-firing Th1 or a hyper-firing Th2 response is it destroying your own cells. Okay, well that's a little bit clearer. We know that's the immune system killing your own cells, but still why? Well, your immune system, remember I said it does one thing and it does one thing well? What does it do? Kills things. That's what it's supposed to do. So your immune system, therefore, by very definition, is only supposed to turn on against something that it can kill. What are things that are killable that can enter your body as pathogens? We named them viruses, bacteria, uh, parasites, uh, molds, funguses, right? Living organisms. Those are called biotoxins, living organisms that enter your body. Your immune system is supposed to kill those things. So, if my immune system is healthy, okay, it's, high, it's, it's a healthy immune system, I will fire a Th1, Th2 response and be able to kill that thing most of the time. So, here's the problems. Here's some things that cause an autoimmune disorder. There are some biotoxins, living organisms, mainly bacteria, that have the ability to go inside the cell. Now, bacteria are typically too large to go inside the cell. So, you're exposed to them, you breathe them on me, they went into my bloodstream, they're circulated around my bloodstream. As long as they stay within my bloodstream, my immune system should be able to kill them as long as I have a healthy enough immune system. The problem is, is that there are some things, viruses, viruses are small enough to go inside of a cell. Now, if a virus enters a cell, and there's some bacteria that could go inside of the cell, that's the problem with Lyme disease, if, if there is a virus or a bacteria that goes inside the cell, what happens is your cell puts up this chemical marker on the outside of the cell. In a sense, you can say it's like if you went in to rob a bank and the cashier goes, okay, and she pushes the red button under the counter. And it calls the police and tells them there's somebody robbing our bank. And the police send the SWAT team, surround the entire bank until they catch the robber. Well, your body is much more efficient in waiting out for the robber to come out of the bank. What your body does when a virus enters the cell, the cell puts up a marker on the outside of the cell. Your lymphocytes and macrophages will surround that entire cell and destroy the cell, thereby killing the pathogen. It's very efficient. We sacrifice one cell. So what? It was going to die in six weeks anyhow, but we killed the pathogen and we destroyed it. However, there are some nasty viruses, Lyme being one of them, that could go inside the cell and disable that marker. So think of it, the teller inside the cell is hitting the red button, but nobody's coming to the rescue. 
So that pathogen can reproduce, reproduce, reproduce. And since we've got somebody talking on Lyme today, we'll use another type of pathogen that does that very well. And have you ever heard of Helicobacter pylori, H. pylori? It's, uh, it's, it's a nasty bacterial infection that has the ability to go inside the cell and disable that marker and reproduce. And because they're opportunistic organisms, when the immune response has finally slowed down or died down, it goes outside the cell and reproduces some more. You fire another immune response, it goes back inside the cell and hides again. Nasty things. So if I have one of those nasty type bacterial or viruses that have the ability to disable the marker inside the cell, my immune system cannot find it and then cannot effectively kill it. So it's constantly firing in a response against this pathogen that isn't very killable because it's elusive. Follow me? So when I do fire a Th1 response and now it suppresses and I fire a Th2 response and it hides inside the cell, my Th2 cytokines, the chemicals that are in that Th2 response that are responsible for making antibodies, are now looking for, I don't know what I'm supposed to make an antibody against, and here I'm at the, you know, the thyroid gland, and I do, so it starts making antibodies against your own tissue. That's what an autoimmune disease is. When your immune system, particularly your Th2 response, is unable to find the pathogen, what we now call the antigen, something that the immune system is turned on against, it's unable to find the antigen that your Th1 system has been constantly trying to fire and kill. It can create antibodies against the tissue that the response happened in. So then I can end up having thyroid antibodies and then my immune system, my Th1 system starts firing again and it starts destroying thyroid cells. Not good. That's called Hashimoto's or Graves' disease if it's a hyperthyroid. So that's what the definition of an autoimmune disease expanded is that when my immune system starts destroying my own cells because the antigen in question was not able to be found and my immune system, my Th2 side, started to create antibodies against my own tissue and therefore my my immune system, my Th1 cytokines, started destroying my own tissue. That's what an autoimmune disease is. Now, many people have an autoimmune disease and don't even know they have an autoimmune disease. So, because uh, they just don't know the definition of, of their disease. So, rheumatoid arthritis, all the inflammatory arthritides. So, there's arthritis as far as, as, far as um, Classification is you can have degenerative arthritis, meaning that's a wear and tear disease, or you can have an inflammatory arthritis. That's rheumatoid, psoriatic arthritis, gout. So uh, that, those are autoimmune disorders. So the one way that you develop an autoimmune disease is if you are exposed to a biotoxin, a living organism that has the ability to go inside the cell and your body is unable to kill it. The second way that you can fire, that you can create, your body ends up creating an autoimmune disease is if your immune system turns on against something that it was never supposed to turn on to. And your immune system was never supposed to turn on to inert substances, meaning non-living toxins. So what are some non-living toxins that if we did a you know, chemical smear of anybody's bone tissue or joint capsule or Neural tissue here would probably have some in. Heavy metals. heavy metals. So heavy metals, pesticides, chemicals, uh, fertilizers. I mean, there's too many chemicals to mention because they're putting maybe 10 more out on the market a day. Those things are going into our food supplies. They're into uh, our breathing space. I mean, even. I mean, this carpet was not dyed with blueberries and raspberries. I guarantee it. <laughs> so it, you know, those chemicals are leaching. That's why it fades over time. They're leaching into our airspace. The fastest way for you to get something into your blood, other than injecting it, is for you to breathe it in. So those go into your body, they circulate in your body, and <coughs> your liver has to detox them. 
And if your liver is exceeding its ability to get rid of things, which happens on a regular basis, then that has to be shunted somewhere or you'll end up with toxemia and it gets shunted to different cells of your body. So it ends up in the extracellular spaces. It goes into the fat cells mainly. Your fat cells are surrounding all your joint capsules. Your brain is made up of all fat. Not good. So you end up storing these heavy metals, storing these toxins. And if all you did is store them, honestly, you'd be fine. You could live to 120 years old and, and it wouldn't cause any issues. What happens is, is that if your immune system turned on for some other reason, let's say I had a huge, horrible flu, or let's say I broke my leg, so I have this huge immune response because of this injury. Now I got all these Marine Corps running through my blood looking for something to kill. And let's say I sprayed my ankle really bad. Well, I didn't break the skin. I don't have any bacteria there. What is the swollenness of a sprained ankle? That is all a Th1 response. Those are all lymphocytes. So I got this huge Th1 response like, we, gotta, we have an injury here, we are called to the site, we gotta kill, you know, whatever. Well, there aren't any bacteria, I didn't break the skin. The barrier wasn't broken. So it fires this giant response, so they're circulating around, well, we got these guns and we got bullets and I wanna use them. <laughs> <laughs> so it could find something that it's not supposed to turn on against, like mercury in your joint capsule and you start getting this pain in your joint and you can't figure out why. Now once it, your immune system turns on against something, it is relentless. It won't stop. So you have this constant ramped up inflammatory process. 